Welcome to the Inspired Evolution, and it is such a treat to be here today. Today, we have the blessing, the absolute blessing, to have with us Mira Kelly. Mira, how are you? Hello. I'm loving the high energy we're starting <laughs> with. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> it's only going to get further, higher, more uplifting from here because we're going to dive deep into purpose. Look, for those guys tuning into Mira for the first time, give me a moment. Let me introduce you to her. She's a consciousness architect. Dude, what? Right? And she's an international speaker and a past life regressionist. At its core, you could almost say she's basically a master healer, right? She's worked with thousands of people from all over the world individually and through her many programs, products, workshops, and she basically helps them clear emotional and physical problems. This is influenced in a big way by her own profound story, which I hope we get to basically dive a little bit into to really start peeling the thread of you know what's going on here. Um, she's the author of the best-selling book, Beyond Past Lives. This book's been translated into 18 different gorgeous languages, so you know it's definitely reaching people. Um, um, she's been on international TV shows and radio shows. She regularly speaks on stages all around the world. She teaches workshops that empower people to reach their goals and basically live the life that they love. And for those that follow the Inspired Evolution, this is all about living the life you love. So there's a there's a direct correlation here. So it's an absolute blessing to have you here, Mira. How are you? <laughs> So wonderful to to be with you. And honestly, as I was hearing you talk about what I've done and where I've been, I was thinking, man, what a journey I've had. Whoa, that's Who, me? Who's this badass? <laughs> right? yes. That's awesome. It's nice to have that reflection sometimes, isn't it? Just to like really ground into like, actually, you know, I, I actually have done some things. I am um, one of my one of my dear friends and uh, mentors from Mind Valley, he he has on a piece of paper, you know, um, some some of the key milestones that he's achieved. And before he goes out on stage, he basically just pulls this out sometimes when he's feeling anxious and all like his self worth stuff is coming up, and he just goes, "Hey, like, no, actually, I've done a few things in my life that are noteworthy, and okay, let's let's just share that, you know." And so it's really isn't beautiful. that brilliant. <laughs> Brilliant. Yes. Right. Because people, so because of my own story, as you and I spoke ahead of time before we turned the recording on, mm -hmm. um, which is very similar to yours, right? Uh, looking for a way to express our gifts and talents and moving away from a corporate world to to the evolution of our soul being reflected in the evolution of our work. So because of my own journey, I often get people come to me and say to me, I am recognizing these abilities. I want to do uh, either I have started my own business or I'm wanting to start my own business and serve people. But then here's what I'm bumping into. Who am mm. I? Who am I mm. to, to carry this mission that I dream in the quiet moments of my mind, right? That I'm I'm scared to tell other people, but when I'm in my mind, I'm brave to dream a big dream, right? Who am I? And, and, um, I really love uh, the example that you gave of uh, this this person, this mentor of yours, because truly the better question is, who am I not, right? Mm -hmm. Like, wh why? Rather than saying, why uh, uh, should I be successful? It's better to say, why am I successful, right? Why have I achieved everything I already have? And, and literally look at it like that way. So mm -hmm. I'm loving that we're starting off right here. <laughs> it's only going to get deeper. So, you know, this, this fundamental question of who am I is a deep philosophical sort of seed that's, you know, mm -hmm. we've been trying to answer for since we've been around, you know what I mean? It's like, um, I almost kind of feel sorry for, for Descartes sometimes, you know, with, from a place of compassion, it's like, I think therefore I am. And it's like, actually you are, and therefore you think, you know, and it's like this, this kind of conundrum. But even then, you know, philosophers have been trying to ponder this question of who am I? And I think interwoven and laden in that is this conversation around purpose you know it's like who am I like why am I asking this question is well if I'm here you know there must be a reason you know could it be meaningless perhaps it is perhaps it isn't I don't know <laughs> you know let's have this conversation um but yeah this 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 query around like what is my purpose I guess let's let's start with finding out you know like how did you uncover your purpose what was the story there sister 
And I think my own purpose found me, honestly, or maybe I didn't question way too, too hard the way most people do, right? Um, What I mean by that is I discovered um, the work of past life regression when I was a kid. Mm -hmm. I, uh, sheerly out of curiosity, right? I grew up um, in a communist country, so spirituality wasn't part of my upbringing. Yet when once the political regime changed, all of a sudden there was an influx of information and sharing and ideas. And I discovered the possibility that past life regression held and helping people see the big picture of their soul's journey, but also using that tool as a way of healing, answering, guiding. And so I was curious. I created uh, an experience for myself. And sure enough, I dropped into the body of a woman. It was such a shock to be like, wait, 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 I'm a different person. This is a different time frame. And so that was my introduction into it. Um, and then years later, I was already working as an attorney in a large law firm in New York City. And I was, um, you know, doing what you're supposed to. In other words, uh, uh, hitting all these marks of, yeah, this is how you measure success. This is how you progress through life. And I had developed a a condition, a physical condition um, that was not getting resolved through the traditional uh, approach that my practitioners, healthcare practitioners were suggesting. So they suggested an operation. And uh, the, 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 the description of that operation sounded horrible, right? And so I... Um just as a context so people understand the the craziness of what I was being told to do. It was a TMJ condition, which means that the muscles of my jaw were inflamed. However, there was nothing wrong with the jaw itself, right? The bone structure. And so what I was being told in order to heal the inflammation was to actually break the jaw and reattach it back with wires. Can you imagine that? And so I I just, even just (laughs) telling the story, I have shivers. I'm thinking why would you break somebody's jaw to calm the inflammation in their muscles, oh, right? Wow. So that tells you they didn't know what to do with me. And it was severe, severe pain. And the other option I was given was to... Um, um, live with chronic pain for the rest of my life. And as you can imagine, that's not an option either, right? Mm. You get the smallest cut on your finger and you're thinking, man, that bothers me much less, you know, if it's a significant thing. And so um, I, it it was in this moment of desperation that I remembered the regression I did as a kid. And I said to myself, well, why not, right? Like, I don't know what else to do. I don't know where else to turn. And lo and behold, I experienced a life of being um, being this man who was very strong, physically powerful, but emotionally, he was so broken from being enslaved. And I had this big metal collar right here around my neck. Mm -hmm. And, and, and of course, obviously, there is always the connection. Um, when the metal collar was put around his neck, um, there was an imperfection that was always hitting the jaw, right? And so it was the same spot that in this life near of me was experiencing the pain. And so, and so uh, this, this connection with a past life allowed me to experience a lot of cathartic emotions of, you know, questioning and, Mm. and just releasing emotion. And, uh, and so I woke up the next morning after having experienced this past life and the pain was gone, right? The, The pain was gone. And so very quickly my life changed from there on because even though things went back to normal i was different now right and so now i wanted to learn more about a uh, reincarnation i wanted to understand more uh, about this tool of um, how uh, it can help people and so naturally that progressed um, over time and eventually i started working with friends with with clients i eventually left my legal job behind and i started working with people 
And initially, my work was solely focused on using past life regression because, you know, that's how I, I came into the scene. And then over time, um, I brought in truly me as the master tool, right? So I became the tool. That's why, that's why the description at the beginning of the consciousness architect, because these days, what I really bring is not just helping the person to heal emotionally and to answer things, but truly to be able to redesign their consciousness because that's really what liberates us, right? That's really what allows the path to unfold and to move their life uh, in a way they want it to be. And so because of my own story, I speak about purpose so much, mm. right? So I'm really happy we get to have this conversation. Yeah, incredible, incredible. And you know, I think there's, you know, uh, I'm going to use the word story really interestingly because some people have hangups around stories being disbelief uh, or disbelief, unbelievable, but like, like uh, not 10, not uh, real. Sorry, that's mm -hmm. the word. <laughs> but um, there's this really interesting concept around like you experiencing a transformation through the stories that are present, whether they're through time, but they're, they're connected to your mind, right? Um, and just enabling that transformation through that belief um, fundamentally is, is quite a powerful shift. Stories are really a very beautiful way for us to connect with the understanding, with the lesson to release emotion. I'm so happy you brought that up. Honestly, I've never had that come up in an interview where the person actually heard that piece and, and noticed it. And, and think about it. We are truly story-based with everything. We explain our life away that way. We dream of the future in, in stories. So yeah, it's interesting to think a, a, about that, right? Yeah. And so do you see like the the narrative of our life almost being like a story as well and as that kind of the the tangent to purpose as well that we're consistently like we're living out a story to some degree and 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 the ability to mold and shift that story in order to move ourselves in the direction that we want to go so when people say to me uh, really what is our purpose right mm -hmm. because i i daily i am out there in other words not only in my own personal practice of connecting with the divine but through every person that i work with i get to literally have this first second hand very close with whichever word you want to use to describe close experience of understanding the mystical, of understanding our connection with the divine, being right there on the cutting edge of, of uh, adventures and consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. And so um, when people say to me, what is my purpose? I give them this two-layered answer. And so the first layer of this answer is really your purpose is to be you period. It's very simple, as simple as it sounds. The application of it is really harder. But that's where the second layer comes in, right? But, but, the, but the bigger answer is you're all here to be you with all your glory, with all your talents, with truly you mm -hmm. and and um and so when it gets a little more specific that's the second level of the answer mm -hmm. our purpose is to be here for us to be ourselves so that we can in the being of ourselves in the use of our gifts and talents in the fulfillment of our value right in other words each one of us has those gifts and talents each one of us has this incredible value to contribute because we're life giving life to life right mm -hmm. and by being ourselves and so by fulfilling our value, we really have to learn a couple of things. And that is how to use our thoughts and our emotions in order to manipulate consciousness, right? In order to ma manipulate our value, our, us, ourselves, in order to learn how to handle this power to create life uh, and and to really learn how to handle those thoughts and emotions that mental energy and this is really where the application gets to be very real right the first answer is yeah your purpose is to be you sounds a little too vague and a little like yeah too what do visible. i do with myself yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. but but with the second layer it's really very specific yes your biggest job is in the fulfillment of your worth and value to learn how to handle your thoughts and your emotions. In other words, to learn how to handle this creative power within us. 
And, um, and so, the, as you can tell, my definition of purpose is not just a job description. It's not just you starting a business that will put a roof over your head and pay the bills. It's really much bigger. It's about you waking up every day and feeling that you're contributing and what you're doing is changing lives and what do you and and you know somebody baking cookies is changing lives right i'm not trying to say that we all need to go and do these jobs uh, that are bigger mm. bigger than life themselves um but it's tr in in my definition of purpose it really comes down to bring all of yourself into it, right? Your life becomes an expression of your purpose, not yeah. just the job we do. I love that because, yeah, I'm a big believer of, you know, it's very difficult to, or I actually just don't even subscribe to the idea that my job is different to my life, my family life mm -hmm. and my dogs or my interactions and like then how I am at the cafe. It's like everything is just one being, you know, and that all is woven into like your identity as who you are and then thus the story and the purpose that you're living. There's something in there which, I, okay, so the next point I really want to get into is, you know, we're talking about uh, changing lives and obviously where to start, you know, so I think that's a really good place for us to go. But just before we get there, um, I really wanted to just flag something like you said, your thoughts and your emotions as a tool to sort of navigate your way through consciousness, right? And like to, to handle that, you use the word, um, it's a creative power. Yeah. And there's a real subtle, there's like a real subtle thing because we could easily gloss over that. But the reality is for a lot of us, thoughts and emotions are actually, they seem to be a reactive uh, consequence of what we're navigating through, but you actually identified it and flagged it as a creative power. Can you tell us just a little bit about that <laughs> before we dive oh, into? Yeah. Oh my, that can be a conversation <laughs> into itself, right? <laughs> because <laughs> we definitely have all been conditioned to believe that we are responding to life mm. uh, rather than life responding to us, right? Mm. So here is an example. Um, um, uh, you receiving an email that irks you and irritates you, which was the first one, the chicken or the egg? In other words, did you have thoughts and emotions about that person that were not in congruence of, you know, not in alignment with gratitude and appreciation and good vibes, right? And instead you, you were irritated and did they respond to you or did you just react to what they sent, right? It's a, it's a very interesting question and obviously the answer I have arrived at is time is simultaneous so so what that means is that it's a it's a beautiful game of give and take mm. but when we are in a place of you know living our daily life it does um, it does feel like time is linear in other words <laughs> one after another and yeah. so the, what I want to train and teach people to do for themselves so that they feel as the empowered beings that they're really here to be and to live and to know themselves as is to really see themselves as the starting point rather than seeing life as re reacting as something to react to instead start realizing that somebody's always listening somebody's mm. always listening and the, and whatever is being heard comes right back to you right mm. that has been truly the miracles i have been experiencing in my own life um as of as of uh, uh, late of this reinforcement of the understanding of Oh my God, somebody's always listening. And of course, I don't mean it in that crazy sense of spirit. Big brother. And stuff like that. <laughs> oh, I mean, yeah. Exactly, big brother. Uh, 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 what I mean is the field, the, yeah. the, all that is. The tapestry own, that's woven us together. Right? Yeah. Like the, 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 I'm always heard, right? I'm, I'm, I'm the observer observing. And as mm. I observe, I collapse and I receive. Yeah. So from there then you know thank you so much for sharing that where does one begin to sort of go okay so i've identified that okay let's just say i accept that yes my soul is here on a journey on a purpose there is a bigger picture than just me coming here going to work paying my bills coming home right um where do i begin to then go okay now i understand that perhaps there is a purpose to me <laughs> where do i begin <laughs> And my suggestion is uh, very simply go right where it's easy. 
because your purpose is you. In other words, it's the expression of you. So this is not about something that is hard. This is Mm. not something that you have to deserve. This is already in you, right? You already know what people appreciate you for. You already know what comes easy for you. You already know how, uh, in what leaning direction you go in, right? And if it's so hard, for example, I get a lot of women who say to me, who come and work with me and say, I've been married, I've been uh, raising kids, I feel like I lost my way. I don't even know who I am other than making meals and driving kids to sport practices and, you know, helping my husband's career. So if you're in that extreme place of I literally have lost my way, backtrack to when you were younger and when you were a kid, what what came easy? What was Mm. natural for you? What was enjoyable? What can you do for hours and literally lose yourself? And and then all of a sudden you look up and you say, whoa, really? Three hours have gone by? So, so your your natural gifts and talents and and please do not make the mistake of what so many of us have been raised with because i mean in their well meaning so many of our parents have said to us yes music and art is something that comes naturally and enjoyably to you but how are you going to make mm-hmm. a living with that right so so we have been taught how to discredit those talents and to be told just because it's easy, it doesn't mean that, you know, it's going to get you anywhere. And that's the reason why I even went into law, right? I had to learn the harder way for myself. In other words, being a lawyer, I was a great lawyer, but law was not my passion, right? Um, people are my passion. Mm. Having having the opportunity to witness somebody, to to see their magic, to understand what the challenges are, and to intuitively know how to bring the best out of them. Now, how do you put a price on this one, right? <laughs> Three years ago, it could have been very easy that somebody would have said to me, yeah, that's nice. Yes, you can become a psychotherapist or whatever you want to become, but... Eh, that's why, you know, my father suggested you're better off becoming an attorney, right? <laughs> and so and so that's why I'm saying to people, your talents, but don't discredit them, right? Don't minimize them. Yeah, yeah. I think that's really, really deep because, yeah, it's, uh, you know, and I think one of the key things is like your purpose, what I've heard you say is something that I, I share quite a bit um, in my own one-on-one coaching sessions is that you actually can't fake your purpose. It's always there. It's always present, you know, like always. if like take a look around your house. Like if you come to my place, you'll see lots of books uh, on spirituality, personal development, because that's where my natural, like you can't fake your curiosity. There's musical instruments everywhere because music is, you know, everything um, to me, right? And then, but even like if you don't have your home decorated the way that you think you would want to, look through your phone. What have you been YouTubing recently? You know, like it's all there. It's like, you're just like, where is, where are you? Like you said, spending three hours of your time unconsciously, that's just where you're naturally going. Like, you know, what does that look like? Um, I think the key, the key question there from, and oh, just to, just to cement that in a little bit further, having, having read and been exposed to some of your work, um, I think the, the blueprint kind of goes, find what, like, find what is that, that space where, you know, you're excited, you lose your, lose your, lose your time. And, you know, it's really rich and rewarding, whether that was somewhere from your childhood or somewhere you're naturally losing your time and space now, um, just because you're so absorbed in the moment in doing what you're doing. Um, and then from there also just like navigating that through the best of your ability. Um, and then doing that without expectation. So kind of Yeah, do, you know. let me let me elaborate a little bit on that because what you said there is quite profound and so um I was quoting the, you. <laughs> yeah, go on. No, thank you. <laughs> Thank you, right? I gave myself a compliment. Too funny. And so um and so um Mm. The, 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 the question of living your purpose is not like a degree we earn, right? Like you mm. figure it out and you're done for the rest of your life and that's it. No, because you're always developing that desire for more, for experiencing always grows, right? It, it never ends. So that's why this formula that you quoted is so is so perfect because it allows the, the growth to continue for the rest of our life, literally, mm. so that we are 
always on purpose, every day waking up and saying, okay, how do I serve? How do I give? And so it starts by saying, what, what, what speaks to me right here, right now, in this moment? Because remember, purpose is not a job description. It's not something you need to go and earn as a, as a degree and get as a title. It's literally who you are. And so in this now moment, you can live your purpose, right? Like right now you can start living your purpose. It's not about next year and the New Year's resolution. And so simply ask yourself of what I have available right here, right now, what speaks to me? What feeds my soul? What do I have the opportunity to engage in? And and that really is the highest excitement in this moment because that's how our soul talks to us, right? That's how our soul communicates and says, this is the way, this is the way, right? It's, it's that higher frequency. And by now, everybody knows the feeling of this feels good and right and aligned and this feels off. I'm pushing too hard on this one, right? So that's what I'm speaking of. Choose what feels good and happy and, and makes you feel fulfilled and excites you and intrigues you. And it doesn't need to be uh, major, major things. It could be as simple as you and I speaking or me going for a walk, right? friends getting together and or 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 so, something else right it could be on a moment to moment basis whatever is in front of you and then it's very important to do what excites you without uh, any ex- uh, you know without um, uh, without holding back without uh, without any expectations um, in other words truly do it to the best of your abilities right if you're going to read a book read the book right if you're going to talk to someone be fully present because we often get engaged and this kind of also leads to the uh, to the third step which is do what excites you do to the best of your abilities and do it without expectation because oftentimes we've been in places where we say, okay, I'm trying to start this business. I have this business idea. This is what's in front of me. And this is so not enough, Mm -hmm. right? Like how is this ever, ever going to bring me the money so I can actually leave my current job and still be able to meet all my expenses, right? For example, how would me starting a Facebook group so that I can talk to people about what moves me, right, for free, I'm talking about for free, how would that actually help me you understand, right? Totally. And so, and so that's why do it to the best of your abilities. Do it simply because it's fulfilling in the moment. Simply because you would not do anything else, right? It's the best thing you can think of doing with your time right now. And and then the third step is don't worry how it's going to get you where you want to go, right? Because this is this is the magic of when you start listening to your soul, when you start living with that sense of being guided from within. Your subconscious is so much better equipped of running your life than than our ego mind can. Secrets right? out. <laughs> right, right, right. So literally, if we actually just uh, create a daily ritual of dissociating, just so we can kind of clean the the the. the connect communication channels and be able to be present and be able to hear these that communication our subconscious will get us there if it knows how to beat your heart and and to sustain life why wouldn't it know how to get you to 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 create a singing career that fulfills your heart right (laughs) yeah one of the um most profound things that I, i learned early on was actually and Um, If your brain was a computer is the metaphor, your conscious mind, right, is processing the equivalent of five frames or five bits of information per second, right? So like, ba-dunk, 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 ba-dunk per second, right? Yeah. Conscious mind is processing 20,000 or 40,000, something like that. I can't remember the exact number, but it's it's like that, right? So like the, the ratio towards what your conscious mind and we think that we're creating goals and setting things, you know, consistently is is just this illusion. <laughs> it's like, you know, it's like there's so much going on in your conscious mind. If you can harness the power of that, like Mira was just saying, <laughs> phenomenal, right? So one of the one of the deepest insights I had for me personally recently um, that came from meditation was 
somehow, and I've been on this, you know, the Inspired Evolution is about living the life you love, similar to your message. And one of the things that I realized was somehow, and just your thoughts on this, somehow, how dare, let's put it that way, how dare I have the audacity to ever think that I was off purpose because soul is so much bigger than who I am. Right. And so I, that for me was like a really profound insight is that like all my challenges have kind of led even to my breakthroughs, like yourself in like, you know, I, I hear your story and you say, you know, I kind of hear this. I got backed into a corner to then have to unleash my potential. You know, you got backed into like this, this challenge with your jaw and it's like, no, 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 none of these treatments. No, no, no. And it's like, shit. Okay. Well, let me try this thing that I remember from way back when in, in the corner of my desperation to help. And then that breaks you through. And then you kind of, and this has been one of the most profound insights from the Inspired Evolution, interviewing people again and again, like your biggest challenge consistently forms your biggest gift. You know, it's like the tools that help you navigate the darkness, help you kind of show the light for, you know, that you uh, and compelled to share for everybody else as well. Um, from there, like, yeah, like, you know, what, it, like that relationship between do we need to consistently get stuck in a corner to break through? Is that just something that you see again and again as well? Or can we circumnavigate that process somehow? What are your insights? Gosh, there? I so love what you just shared because it, how dare I ever think that I'm ever off purpose means that there's really no failure, right? <laughs> like literally how, how could I possibly think I'm failing when I'm, I'm always, I'm always on purpose. I'm always me. Right. Mm. And, and so and so uh, the, uh, do we need to get stuck in a corner to um in order to to break through i mean obviously that's the whole point so that we make these moments of transition smoother and easier uh, that we don't really need to have a breakdown to have a breakthrough mm. obviously obviously our biggest challenge always becomes our greatest lesson mm. but you know i don't really subscribe to the theory that we're here to learn from suffering mm. and to learn through suffering and because we suffered we're better souls um, I honestly believe that the purpose of suffering is to teach us how not to suffer. In other words, next time around when I'm about to approach a corner, I'm saying to myself, no, 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 we're not going there again. <laughs> We've been there. We don't want to do that again, yeah, right? Yeah. And that's the whole purpose of an evolution, right? Even the, the word in, in the, that is so significant to the show is I, next time around, I want to do it better and I want to do it better. So I feel like this opportunity to to, because as I spoke of these steps and do what excites you, do it to the best of your abilities and do it without knowing and expecting how it's going to get you to your goal, to what the ego mind has set as a, as a goal, is really a way of constantly being in intuition, in connection with our soul, with connection with our uh, uh, inner self, our subconscious, whatever word we want to use. Mm. And so that constant connection, isn't that the whole purpose of that guidance system to always tell us and left and how about we go this way and how about if we you park right here because you're gonna meet this person and this person five years from now will be incredibly important right that kind of thing yeah i think what you're alluding to is kind of where i'd love to take the conversation next which is really like it's been a massive i guess just full transparency calling myself out like just stepping into, you know, out of my adolescence, I guess, um, and having lost one of my mentors last year to, you know, she basically passed away, started having some really deep sittings with death and the understanding of death and that it is like uh, an inevitable process and outcome for us all. But you can imagine being like 25 to 30, you kind of have this invincibility cloak, you know, it's just like, I'm I, like, I'm here, I'm now, <laughs> I've got life to charge for. Let me set some goals, let me achieve some things. And um, one of the things that, I found myself guilty of was this this control thing, and I think I still think it's ever present. The ego is consistently trying to control, right? But um, one of the challenges that I've really set for myself, and I'm really starting to like ease and nurture and cultivate in my life, is this whole element of surrender. Um, and I heard it many times people like on a spiritual path saying surrender, you know, like learn to surrender. And I was like, yeah, but I'm young and able bodied and for another time and space, you know what I mean? Like right now I'm here to take charge, you know, that whole warrior energy. But now I'm learning that actually like the same thing we were talking before, like five frames per second versus 20 to 40,000 frames per second, like that 
all that energy has been guiding me so much more fluidly, even more so than I have could ever do with my blinkers on. But I think it's the blinkers that are kind of navigating me to where, is, where I'm going. But that whole energy around surrender and as you're speaking to inspiration, intuition, um, yeah, even just how do we learn to firstly to tune into that and then trust that that can be the process? Well, I think it'll be a good starting point to mm, set set the record straight on what's the purpose of our ego. Mm. And so if we think of our ego as uh, the topmost layer of, you know, obviously uh, the subconscious being the layer below and then the, the, the soul and then our soul being part of a bigger entity that, that you know, encompasses all these uh, incarnational uh, other life aspects of us. So the ego, the ego's purpose is really to sift through preferences. So in other words, the ego is uh, for the purpose of not so much creating reality. This is where the, the, the that struggle oftentimes comes in, but it's really for the purpose of sifting through preferences, gathering data, and feeding that data to the inner self, to the subconscious. Because the subconscious and the inner self no m- m- rely on the ego to give clear direction of this is what I choose, this is how I, what I prefer, this is in which direction I want to express the creativity of this whole structure, right? And so, if the ego decides that it's um, this, it's involved in a beautiful dance where it's always supported. That's why I was initially speaking of somebody's always listening, right? <laughs> it's a dance of. Uh, that I'm doing with these other parts of me, then I'm not alone. Then mm-hmm. I don't need to approach life head on and I'm going to do everything. And then sometimes I succeed, which is amazing. And sometimes I fail. And then that bru- bruises me, that wounds me, that hurts me, that backs me in a corner, right? And that doesn't feel good and shakes up my confidence, shakes up my, my, my certainty. So, uh, so, Rather than seeing the ego as this and treating the ego as this stepchild, and undoubtedly, you know, some of our uh, us have a little more of a barking dog of an ego, right? Undoubtedly. Um, but what if we approach uh, life differently, where as we grow spiritually, it's not about dissolving our ego and getting rid of it. Because I got to tell you, I have a friend who during um, um, a psychedelic journey set a goal for himself of saying, my ego is the culprit. I got to get rid of my ego here, right? Like ego, bad, mm. got to kill my ego. So sure enough, because in, in these journeys, people are very suggestive sure enough he kills his ego yeah but you need an ego you need to decide do i prefer granola for breakfast or orange juice right that kind of thing or do i prefer a toast and so so sure naturally um for the next couple of months he was literally walking around saying who am i like what do i do right that he was needing to rebuild his identity right so naturally another ego arises and 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 so it's not about getting rid of the ego it's about learning how to work with the ego and so as we evolve on our spiritual path of understanding and living our purpose it becomes something else altogether right? It's about the the ego blending with our inner self, the ego becoming a different structure altogether, where you're literally allowing for these deeper forces and resources to become, to come much more to the surface so that it's an easier access, a more uh, natural living, if you will, right? Mm -hmm. Where you're not looking to escape life. Instead, you're here and you're loving every moment. And yeah, you have trip ups, but then you adjust and you know how and you feel guided. And, and so, uh, the, the, that's why, that's why that's why the understanding that you have been having, I'm always on purpose. How could I ever be off the path? I mean, right. I'm always on the path of being myself. Mm. I love that. So <coughs> thank you so much for sharing that and distilling that down to really help the comprehension. Now, 
sometimes these episodes get a bit chop suey just because <laughs> that's just how it goes. But uh, one of the questions I've got then, like, you know, we've been talking about purpose and it can be somewhat nebulous mm. at times. And one thing I just, you know, have to have to honor and have to take a moment to acknowledge is I really respect and really love how simple you keep it. Um, one of the biggest lessons yeah. I've had on this journey of personal development is that generally when people are like complicating things, I've had to, and maybe there's a, a belief system, but I've had to learn that actually they're trying to sell me something. <laughs> <laughs> and so when it's simple, the truth is always simple. And sometimes simplicity doesn't mean it's easier. It's harder because it's simple because it's like, damn it, it's just so simple. Uh, you know, just be. Oh. <laughs> but I really just want to take a moment to honor and acknowledge just how simple, you know, again and again, you're, you're keeping it. And I, I really appreciate and respect that to, to a degree higher than I can actually articulate in words. That means um, so much to me. Thank you. Thank you. I'm very practical. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Thank you. And so that kind of weaves into where I want to go. So in terms of the practicality, um, you know, there's this inspiration, there's this inner guidance, you know, and maybe my inner guidance is like, Hey, Amrit, you know, you're, for me, it's like speaking conversation and connecting people, connecting ideas, connecting ideas to people, connecting people to people, and then using communication as a tool. You know, it took me a while to kind of understand that, hey, this is like what really sparks joy in me. I lose time. I'm animated when I do it. I love it to the nth degree, right? Now, that's me, and I feel like that's kind of one of my pur- like me being on one of my purposes. Now, in and around that, what happens for someone that is like, hey, you know, yes, all this inspiration, like I kind of know that perhaps – let's not take Amrit as an example, but say gardening. Like when I'm in the garden, I lose hours on end and I'm just connected and I'm present and nothing else matters. And I've just got my headphones in. I'm just doing my thing. I'm so at peace, you know, but then how does that pay my bills? You know, there's this conversation around inspiration, but then I've got to somehow ground that in to pay my bills. And there's all that, there's such a space in there for most of us that is like, you know, similar to where you were a lawyer and then like past love aggression as a healer. And it's like, you know, engineer. And then it's like, wait, public speaker and international speaker and coach and trainer. And it's like, what, like there's such a space between our inspirations and what we're speaking. And obviously society's groomed us in a certain way. And we've spoken about the breakdown to break through, but without that, you know, like how do we kind of say, there is always that question. I'm inspired by this, but how is that going to pay my bills? So the answer is always in the problem. It's just, it always goes that way. So right here, where you are right now, the answer exists literally right here, right now. Obviously you haven't allowed yourself to see it. Otherwise you wouldn't be a problem, right? But the answer is in the problem. And so, and so, um, if you, Start saying rather than uh, remember how um, we spoke initially about why am I successful versus why why am I you know who am I why should I be living this dream? Hmm. What if you start feeding yourself the self talk because self talk is very important, right? Remember this is a thought responsive universe and the reality we live in is a mental construct that responds to you. So what if you start feeding uh, yourself and reality with the with the inner talk of the answer is here. I'm seeing it. It's so clear. It's so obvious. What if? What if it's easy? What if it's this? What if I'm curious? Rather than the worry of how is it going to come? Remember, it's a very simple rule, right? Do what excites you. Do it to the best of your abilities. Do it without knowing how or you know expecting how it's going to get you there. In other words. Um, Gear that goes back to using our mental energy, right? Use the inner self talk as a way of I'm uh, knowing, I'm given, I'm shown. And, and why am I succeeding? Why, why is this working out for me? Because remember, it's so simple. The brain will always find the answer, right? Even just the simple question of why am I good at this? And the answer is so clear. Why am I loved and supported? And the answer comes. Why is this easy for me? In other words, li- literally stack things that way in your favor so that as you put that out there, that's what comes back to you versus the confusion of I'm so confused what is the way and naturally more confusion comes back 
I love that. One of my um, favorite podcasters, uh, Tim Ferriss, he has this mantra that he leans in on, which is, what would this look like if this was easy? What would this look like if this was easy? What would this look like if this was easy? And he's just like, apparently just uses that again and again because the mind loves to complicate things. And I think that's that's really, really profound what you're, what you're sharing there and just reminded me of that as well. And actually... What that triggers for me is at the moment, one of the, one of the things I've been sitting with um, in terms of identifying my own limiting beliefs, because I'm sure you must interface with people's limiting beliefs when it comes to helping them navigate through their purpose, or even sometimes, you know, like some people may not even believe in like the fact that they had a past life or, you know, that sort of conversation. Um, you know, one of my biggest things has been in order to identify one of the key limiting beliefs is I've been sitting with this phrase, which is the universe is my greatest ally. And when I sit with that, there are things that I can feel inside me which go, ah, but there was that time or what about this? And, you know, why would it do that to you? And I was like, no, hang on a sec. You can choose to believe whatever you want. So the universe is my greatest ally. And in there I can feel the pockets of energy where it's like, actually, there's some limiting beliefs in here that I need to I need to tackle. Um, how would you suggest or how would you recommend someone start working through their limiting beliefs? And isn't this interesting how it feeds into what you earlier spoke about surrender? Uh, because surrender is not about giving up, right? Surrender is not about throwing the towel, towel and saying, ah, I, I give up. Surrender is really saying, actually, by me being willing to be guided, uh, rather than insisting and stubbornly saying there's only one way, what if, what if I actually trust uh, that the greater knowingness within me, right? My subconscious, my inner self, whatever you want to call that, um, knows the way. So actually surrender is the most important thing I can do here, right? And please tell me the sentence again that you spoke of. <laughs> if the universe, uh, so basically the universe is my greatest ally. Yes, my greatest ally. Isn't it amazing? I say it a bit differently. That's why I was like, what, what was your sentence? My <laughs> sentence is life is always working out for me. Everything is always working out for me, right? Basically the same thing yeah, said yeah. with different words. And that's why I was like, what's your sentence? <laughs> and so, and so in other words, why, why would I think that life is trying to hide away from me or keep away from me what I'm wanting if I already believe mm. that this is a thought responsive universe, right? That I create my reality. Mm. So, so truly all I have to do is just to take it a little easier here. And when I say surrender, it doesn't mean I give up on my dream. When I say surrender, it means okay, let me, let me just pause here and listen, guide me, literally guide me because I'm already talking with my subconscious and I'm saying, show me the way you resolve this, right? Why are things working out for me and so forth. And so here's something that I do literally all the time because, um, uh, I'm re do you ever lucid dream? Sometimes, yeah. <laughs> so you understand the analogy really well. So um, I think of our waking reality as literally us dreaming with our eyes open, right? And so what that means is now, now let's go back to the, uh, to the lucid dreaming state. In the lucid dreaming state, all, all you, you very clearly know that you are the creator of the experience, right? You think of, uh, for example, you think of, oh, Eiffel Tower, and you're literally immediately in Paris. You didn't, in your dreams, need to catch a flight, think of a visa, and, you know, take time. You think Eiffel Tower, and you're at the Eiffel Tower, right? In other words, everything is immediately responding in the dream state. Now, reality is no different. It's just that things are a little slower, right? And so what I... um what I do all the time is I say to my inner self, to my subconscious, while I do this, whatever this is, right? Talk to you, uh, work with a client, make dinner, whatever it is. While I do this, fill in the blank, my subconscious, you resolve, figure out whatever. And I literally imagine because, right? Because it will give me this and that because it, in other words, my outcome, what I'm looking to create. And then I literally imagine how I throw this in the mind of my subconscious or in the quantum field, like, right? I throw it out there and I know it's done because that, 
right? Uh, that life works out for me. Life mm -hmm. always gives me everything I choose and desire. So what if I approach life with more trust and faith? Because mm -hmm. ultimately, that's what surrender means. I trust. I have mm -hmm. faith. Right. And one of the things that has been significantly significant, very important for me <laughs> years ago, especially when I was uh, quieting all my fears um, and looking to move away from being an attorney to doing this work was to create a three phrase mantra for myself. Yeah. Um, I trust myself. I trust my life. I trust the universe. And here you can replace the word trust with faith, right? Mm -hmm. I have faith in myself. I have faith in, in my life. I have faith in the universe. And so as I trust myself, I know what I'm putting out there. I know that because I'm in, in relatively clean control of my thoughts and mm -hmm. my beliefs and my emotions, right? I do it to the best of my abilities. I know yep. what I'm putting out there. Mm -hmm. I trust life to to work out for me. I trust life to always, you know, uh, organize itself around me to support me because truly this is a singular experience. Even though you and I are sharing an experience, each one of us is a universe into our own, right? Mm -hmm. I am the center of this, of this experience. And so I also trust the universe to bring it all together mm -hmm. so surrender is really faith not giving up but true faith faith that my desire then will come to pass faith that i'm taken care of faith that faith that everything will work out and here's what's so interesting we already have faith trust is not something we'll need to learn right because people often say to me mira but i gotta learn how to trust and i say to them no not at all your soul already knows how to trust you already know how to trust right think of it this way your soul chose to forget all about its magnificence and its power and other incarnations and all it knows and dive right in this life and literally show up and say okay i'm gonna start from scratch right and and also on a very practical basis we trust that when we cross the street we're going to cross to the other side right we trust that when we breathe in there's going to be another morning to wake up to so trust is something we already know right so it's literally just a matter or faith is something we already know it's just a matter of what we choose to place our trust and our faith in because oftentimes when we worry and when we rehearse the worst case scenarios just so we are prepared right just so we show we care right because when we worry, we think we, we show that we care. We're really putting 100% of our trust and our faith in the worst thing, which <laughs> is not what we yes. want to pray for. Worry right? is a prayer for bad shit to happen. <laughs> so true. So yeah. well said. <laughs> and so that's why, yeah. that's why surrender and faith and trust are really the most powerful place you can be in. It, so I want to tell you, Recently, I started affirming for myself, I always have faith. I mm. always have faith. Yeah. And, and especially, especially when the doubt starts creeping in, right? That's when mm. I go into, why do I have faith? And then I start reminding myself because life is working out for me because I'm supported. Um, I'm reading my mom says, you're God's favorite child. And she says that to everybody, right? Like that's her phrase to everybody. Everybody is God's favorite, God's favorite, right? So I say to myself, because I'm God's favorite child, because my <laughs> mom said so, right? <laughs> And you understand. So I literally talk myself into, and I always have faith. I always have faith because ultimately it's up for me to get to direct this enormous power that I sit on, meaning my subconscious, the, the mission I've been given in terms of my gifts and talents. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, it's that clear focus that only the ego through its balanced beliefs, through its balanced use of its emotions can actually get me to, right? That's what I'm here for, to learn to handle my mental energy. I love that. There was something really deep in there. Oh, there's, there's a lot of really deep in there. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the things that really stuck out to me was um, you don't have a challenge believing. You don't have a challenge trusting. Mm. It's what you believe in. I was having a really deep conversation with a gentleman that was uh, quite a few years my senior. Um, 
and I'm growing a beard because I'm getting married in literally a month and two days from now. So I have to wear a turban. Congratulations. <laughs> Thank you. I'm definitely the one that should be congratulated. My partner may be getting the raw end of the deal, but, <laughs> but I'm very blessed. I joined University. Wait, hold on, hold on. <laughs> I, I have to say something. She is getting something amazing in her uh-huh. package because you're an exceptional listener. Listen. <laughs> and a woman cannot ask for anything. <laughs> more than a man who hears her. <laughs> Thank you. That's been something that the podcast has helped me grow into, definitely for sure. Um, yeah, she's actually the introvert out of the two of us, so she's actually even better listener. <laughs> so I'm learning from her. <laughs> so thank you for your blessings. One of the one of the key things that um he was having a chat to me around was this gentleman was, hey, like you're growing a beard, you know, you're a man of faith, and it's like absolutely. And he goes, so you believe in God. And I was like, I believe, um, yeah, in God, for sure. And he goes, yeah, I really struggle with this belief in God. And I was like, sure, tell me more about it, uh, you know, standard sort of going into a, a conversation. And he goes, yeah, just this idea that there's someone sitting in the clouds that's taking notes on every deeds and every action and, you know, keeping, and he's got like this calculator. And, and I said, ah, okay, uh, I struggle to believe in that as well. And he goes, wait, what? And he said, uh, do you believe in God? And I'm like, yeah, so I believe and I would struggle to believe in what you would be, like, what you're identifying as God as well. I don't think we, I think we have the same challenges in believing in what you're articulating, which is believing in that God. Um, what you're defining as God is kind of where I, like for me, you know, and he was agnostic and we were having this really open conversation and I was like, look, I don't necessarily see God as what you see God. I just see my faith as being that of a student. I'm here to learn. Um, and anything that teaches me in the quantum fabric of oh, this existence is bizarre reality that is a miracle, right? Um, anything can teach me this mirror. You're an incarnation of my gods because you're teaching me and informing me through this process. If I stop to pause, a braid of grass can teach me that is a manifestation of God. And so in there, just that, that space that there is after humility for wonder is what I call God because it's such a wonder that we're here. And so it's actually like, I don't have a challenge. And then he goes, actually, I don't struggle to believe in wonder because he's a poet, right? As well. So he's just like, oh yeah, I wonder. And so I'm like, yeah, it's not necessarily belief that we have challenge in. It's what we're indoctrinated to believe in that we're necessarily challenged by. Yeah, that's really it. You 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 flushed it out so well. So that's really that's really where I want to encourage everyone who is tuning in and nodding their heads <laughs> to, to take away with in where am I placing my faith? Where am I placing my trust? And what am, where am I placing my knowingness? Right, because that's really when you reach that place of knowingness and certainty, where it's like, yeah, I know it, like I know it like the way I can say I exist right that certainty of I am that's when you reach the place of faith and trust that's when you know oh yeah um my 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 dream coming true is literally a millisecond away <laughs> I love that I love that just one last little pocket of place I wanted to go was um you know there's one I kind of I went through this process of I guess what I want to talk to is fear Um, because I remember when I was having this deep realization around, you know, I'm actually going to leave, you know, the the previous energy of, yep, you know, like this place that I'm in, in terms of how I'm living my life, corporate nine to five may not necessarily be serving me. Um, And I'm by no means like talking down to the corporate nine to five. I think it definitely serves people. It just where I was in that space wasn't serving me at the time. Right. Um, And I needed a shift, but I didn't know how I remember I was, sitting having in a those the listeners obviously already know this story um, but I'm sitting there eating my acai bowl at lunch and I remember pulling out my phone and through a moment of like divine inspiration I just googled the word courage right and I remember googling the word courage and reading it back to me I was having an epiphany like a moment of satori's and it was just incredible and it was so simple because it was a Google induced <laughs> enlightenment, right? So, <laughs> so it's, I feel, you know, Uncle Google at it again. Um, so here I am, and I'm reading the word, the definition to courage, and it said that courage is not not having fear. Yeah, courage is totally having fear, but then moving towards it anyway. 
And my whole life I was like, oh, I'm trying to be fearless. And so that I thought that was the same thing, like not to have fears, but I could be like, oh, actually I'm not fearless. Or I've got fears, you know, like I, I have these certain fears. And as soon as I realized that, it's like, oh shit, actually courage is something you cultivate. Some courage is something that you take action you take action in the face of your fears. And as soon as that realization settled in, the next thing that sort of subbed in was, oh, I know what my biggest fear is as well. You know, it was walking off the path of the, like the, the white picket fence narrative that society installs for us, you know, get a good, get good grades, get a good job, you know, have a happy family, get the white picket fence house, retire, travel, and then, you know, marry, row your boat gently into the stream sort of thing. And so from there, that immediately dropped in and precipitated in the next thing. And so from there, I realized, oh, okay, now that I see that this is my fear, I wonder what's on the other side. That space for like the dance between purpose and how, like what role does courage and fear play towards guiding us towards our purpose? Mm, what an interesting dance. And much like you, uh, I, I uh, absolutely uh, recognize that um, our fears are the fuel that gets us there, right? The fuel uh, that... That's um, why you're putting it. Right? Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> 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 so I I don't ever think I have ever been in a place where I leapt uh, into a new adventure and I did it clear-mindedly, you know, with no trepidation in my heart. And and yet I took I took that leap, right? Mm-hmm. And so I feel like that's really that's really what I am so excited for each one of our listeners and whichever way for them to take that leap of being more of themselves, right? Because mm-hmm. people are afraid of what's on the other side of things, the unknown. And I always say to them, in the unknown, or you go, all you're going to discover is more of yourself. Because the unknown was created by you, literally with every desire, with every thought, with every preference, with every wishful thinking, with every daydream, with every what if, you are creating the unknown. So as you take that leap of faith, you literally step into more of yourself. And isn't that a, a wondrous journey? Oh, absolutely. It's a total inspired evolution. (laughs) (laughs) Oh, sister, thank you so much for sharing that. So one of the last things that would be really rude for me not to marvel on, which is, you know, just something that this is where my head goes and we can just have a, a quick loose conversation about this, I hope, is, you know, when I was reading up on your story, there's this there's this miracle of, you know, like how your jaw healed through your past life regression. And one of the things that continues to fascinate me and uh, one of the people that we've had on is Marissa Peer. She does some work with Mind Valley as well. She's an incredible uh, uh, hypnotherapist. Um, and we were talking about the power of our names and how we end up living out the philosophy and the, you know, the, you know, there's just this name, this label that you walk this is the story of your purpose in life, you know, and maybe I'm projecting and maybe this shouldn't be part of the episode, but I just want to have this candid chat was, you know, there's this miracle that you healed with and your name's Miracelli. <laughs> it's like this miracle, miracle <laughs> that you had this healing. <laughs> I was just tripping out on this and I was just like, wow, isn't that profound for me? But you anyway. read my mind because all along I wanted to keep and to just simply ask you. And I was thinking maybe when we start the, stop the recording, I'll ask you. <laughs> I've been sitting here thinking, you got to tell me what is the meaning of your name, right? <laughs> what does, what does, um, what does Amrit mean? Because I've been a Amritzer one of my mm. most favorite places to visit the Golden Temple. Oh, so I was like, oh, that must be thing. connected. That must be connected. Yeah. So do you want to tell us? And then I'll tell you <laughs> all about my name. <laughs> okay, tit for tat. Here we go. <laughs> yes. Um, so Amrit is, uh, so Mrit means to die. Yeah. And Amrit means immortal. A means un in Punjabi. So it means undying. Um, but Amrit is also the an ambrosial nectar is what they call it. So it's like the nectar of immortality. But in that essence of Im- the nectar of immortality, what it basically alludes to is what is undying is pure because everything that is, is at all times is ever present. So it both means immortal, but it also means pure. 
Um, so it's a lot to live up to. <laughs> wow. but, uh, but that's that's kind of like from the Punjabi philosophy. And then so Amrit is actually the name given to the holy water that we drink. Yeah. Um, so that we have this nectar of purity, so it purifies us because it is immortal and we are therefore immortalized and that spirit that you have. So when you think about spirit, spirit is immortal, spirit is pure and is incorruptible and that's kind of the, the energy of Amrit. Incredible. This is incredible. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> so so um, uh, my my full name is Dobra Mira, and Dobra means good, and Mira is the part that means world in, mm. it, you know, it's a Slavic name. And so... Mm, and so uh, I've always gone by Mira, right? And then I um, I took on the last name of Kelly. And so um, I moved from bringing good to the world to literally creating miracles. Miracles, yeah! Right? How about that? <laughs> I love that. I love that. And sister, to be honest, thank you so much. I've loved and enjoyed your presence here today. To like, and there's been so much in here I've learned and taken taken away from that and I, and I completely trust and surrender to the fact that the listeners have as well and so thank you so much for your time your energy your presence here today but not just today because I know there's a whole bunch of work that goes into informing your presence here today so all the work you've done on yourself through life in surrender in flow on your purpose I really just want to take a moment to acknowledge all of that and um and as always wishing you all the best for what's coming thank up thank you <laughs> thank you thank you thank you it's been such a joy being in conversation and just sitting and having a mandala moment literally, <laughs> literally witnessing witnessing the miracle of of all and and sharing this moment with you and with everyone thank you i enjoyed it immensely you yeah, for those wanting to tune in to your vibes mirror what's the best way to get in touch with you to find you online yeah, so I'm everywhere on social media where your favorite hangout spot is. It's just Mira Kelly. And my website is MiraKelly.com. So you can email me through my website. And and oh, yeah, I'm excited for the conversation to continue. And when you jump on the website, there's this incredible free meditation that you can listen mm. to as well. And it's really gorgeous. So I highly recommend getting your, getting your way there and at least just tuning into a meditation on the back of this episode. It's a, Thank you. And of course, it's about trust and surrender. Yeah. And faith, <laughs> and a, yes. Thank you. Thank you. Of course. And so my, my last question, and by no means my least question, it's kind of where the energy of every episode gets this last question. Um, but it's very profound to have this conversation with you today. Beyond the name, beyond the work that you do, beyond the skin suit that we wear, it's existential in its nature. Um, who are you? Hmm. Oh, gosh. The first word that popped into my uh, uh, head was love. <laughs> love. How about that? <laughs> I love that. I, I, love I, that. I have to tell you a short, brief story. So years ago, um, uh, when I was hanging out with Wayne Dyer, uh, he, was, uh, uh, he was recording a PBS special, and he was teaching people about I am God and then being able to own the power of I am. Mm. And I had this conversation with him of saying, listen, I have such a hard time saying I'm God, right? Like it feels like, who am I, right? Back then I was in that place of who am I to say I'm God? And he said to me, well, can you say I'm love? And I said, yes, yes, I have no problem with <laughs> saying that. So there I am saying to you, I'm love and I'm God. Yo, I love that. I love that. Yes. Oh, such a blessing he is as well and in influencing so many incredible, incredible people on their path with such a beautiful impact. And thank you so much for sharing that, for being God, thank for you. being love and yeah, <laughs> <laughs> of the soul. Thank you guys so much for tuning in to the Love of the Inspired Evolution and sharing the Love of the Inspired Evolution. If you feel like this content may support, has supported you or may support anyone else that you know may resonate with the content of it, please share away and share the love around. Thank you guys so much. And to stay up to date on whatever's coming out with the Inspired Evolution, please subscribe. There's all these links in the bio for you to tune into the episodes and all these different platforms just so that message can get to you and your loved ones. Thank you so much for all your love and support. Stay inspired to evolve.